Welcome back to Gnome Speed Shop. On this episode, we put in the toolbox on the open trailer. Let's check it out. Welcome back, guys. Uh, forgive my voice, it's a little hoarse today. But yeah, went on Marketplace this morning and picked up that uh, truck toolbox. So the battery for this and the winch, possibly the winch. I haven't decided if I'm going to put the winch in there yet. Um, a little more sealed off from the elements. So I don't get as rusty, crusty, and uh, downright crappy. So let's get to it. Now, the previous guy, I don't know if this was another toolbox box or what all this was, but clearly he torched it open at some point, so I think everything except for the plate it sits on is going to get cut out. Um, this big wiring harness here is the seven pin for the trailer brakes and everything else, so obviously leave that on. But battery's going to come out of this, and hopefully... I mount the winch a little better. And you know, the electricals, electrical digitals, electrical, the wires, the things you don't want out in the elements, get those hidden away. Then this is the new to me box. So, yeah. So, this is your standard issue truck toolbox. I think he said it fit his Ford Ranger. So, so do nicely for my purposes. Never been drilled or cut before. Oh no, there's this bolt for the uh, truck bed. About to get a lot more holes. So yeah, time to start cutting all. Oh wait, got a little carried away. Got pulled the battery out. Don't want to cut through my nice battery that was originally bought for the Healy. Ended up on here. Yeah. Oh, that's a top post battery. Old car stuff. Got one for three cars. You got one battery that works sometimes. If you do the math, it works. You're not driving them all the time, anyways. So if you do that, it, it works out. I really should put bolts on this instead of the wing nut thing that uh, Performance Tool gives you in this kit for the battery hold down. But I know me, I've met me. It's going to stay like that for a while. So, now that we got the hold down out of the way, remove. And time to start cutting. My friend Sazo.
best part about metal fab is you decide how clean you want your stuff to actually look. Metal fab, modification, you know, whatever you want to say. Oh yeah, when the blade turns blue, that's how you know you're doing it right. Time for a new blade, and new approach, said ain't working. What's frustrating about this piece is that it's not bending where I want it to to allow the cut to keep going. That's not gonna work. Shazam! Broke the weld. I'll end up using this piece of plate later for reinstallation. My question becomes, do I sit here, throw a slot through this, run the windshrew, both this piece of plate and this piece of plate that's on the trailer, the back side here, or do I keep the winch where it's at? Isolate it all. Hmm. Hmm. Options. Oh, boys. So, advancements have been had. Got all this cleaned up. And started cutting that side off for a little bit of, of lip I left. Um. Toolbox doesn't cover care the uh, toolbox doesn't clear the trailer jack. So now I'm debating do I relocate the trailer jack in front of the tongue here? Leave that alone and alter it more, like raise it up. So if I raise up the toolbox, I'd have enough room. But that turns into leaving the winch there. Which isn't the end of the world. Hmm. 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 What to do? Not all mounted up there. So this plate's not the end of the world. That's not my problem. But that could be removed as well. I want a tape measure. So, took the tape measure to it. The bottom of the toolbox is 20 and a quarter. 20 and a quarter brings me right up to the jack. Hmm. 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 
food mount in the bed or the trailer on itself. No, no, we're not going to do that. Unless. So those leads aren't. I bring it in here. So looking here. Looking at 20 and a quarter. According to the Harbor Freight tape measure. Um, that's the base of the tool box from the very back of that. Clearly interference from the trailer jack. So do I relocate the trailer jack to right here, which was, it looks like it might have been originally there. Hard to tell because this one's welded in two. One of the two. Or do I put it up here with the winch where it's at? Because these leads going into the winch are only so long. And then this box is protected in there. Means I gotta roll the Austin back, which is uh, brain protected right now. Hmm. Let me think on it for a sec. Well, it's the next day. Um, went to go get a trailer jack yesterday at Harbor Freight and some other stuff, and came back out and it was downpouring and it rained pretty much the rest of the day. So that was a damper on my day there. So we continue today. Um, did pick up the trailer jack. Uh, picked up some other odds and ends. Including a solar battery charge from a mount on the top of the toolbox. To trickle charge the battery while it's sitting. So when I need the trailer, I don't come out to a dead battery. So a little forethought for once. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue prepping the trailer here for the new toolbox. And then, yeah, let's see what snags I come across. All right, so the easy part of this is this guy has a pin, so you can rotate it and stuff, which is awesome. But interference fit, like I said, so you're going to come off for either a few minutes or permanently. I haven't decided yet. Depends on how this toolbox lays up. So, yeah. And granted, yes, the floor jack doesn't have a jack stand under it at the moment. But if it falls, it's not going anywhere because I got the back wheels chucked. So, the illusion of safety. Don't do this, but I'm not under it. And it's only going down and the car is still strapped up. So, you know, a lot of, don't do this. I'm not under it right now, so that's okay. Um, so what we're gonna do is test fit the toolbox. That's right, I put the battery in here yesterday. My lower back reminded me as I tried to lift this up. Alright, now let's try. Yeah, something like that. Looks pretty snazzy. And then, does this still open? It opens enough to be useful. Look at all the ants. Huh. Anyways, um. So, yeah. Now we mount the trailer, the other trailer jack, and see what happens. So with a little cutting and grinding, I installed the trailer jack and the toolbox, and believe it or not, it doesn't hit when I have the truck attached. Do a little test fit, the truck on the trailer, and somehow it doesn't fit, hit. Looks out pretty good. 
Let me show you what else I'm going to do here. Let's so open up the toolbox. Going to mount the battery on the left side here. Punch a hole in the side so I can run the wiring through. So it's all pretty much self contained. Unfortunately, my camera didn't record the audio for this, so I'm overdubbing. But if you're wondering, yes, I did use jack stand while I was underneath the vehicle. I mean, the trailer with the tongue jacked up for safety. Um, didn't get a video, but yes, I did have a jack stand under it. Um, made sure I did this as safe as possible. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna test fit the battery and drill the pilot holes for the battery hold downs so I can mount the battery in the toolbox. Yeah, I was gonna mount it long ways, but the more I looked at it, it was way more secure to mount it sideways. I'm going to mount the battery sideways here, and, well, let me bring you on in here so you can take a look at how we're going to mount it and how much clearance we got. So we got the new trailer jack bolted up, mounted in, and here's how we're going to put the battery. Got sideways, got more than enough clearance for the post, and the side rail, the bottom rails there add some more rigidity to it. So it's not going to flex around as much. Now, when you're doing a battery like this, you really got to check your top clearance there. Make sure you're not arcing off the lid. You know, sparks are exciting, but not when it's not controlled. So, test fitting everything. I was really resisting it, but I think I'm going to have to punch a hole in the side of the box here so I can run the wires. So, now that we got the battery all mounted up, wired up, I'm going to... So I'm going to round the edges here a little bit because this was a little gnarly. I want it short to ground here. Short to positive. Sparkies. We're going to do one more thing. Now there's one more thing on this trailer I want to put on here. So the battery is never dead, which is solar trickle charger. Cheapo one for Harbor Freight. They work great. And what's great about these are they're pretty much the easiest insulation you could possibly do on something because A, this is going to go in kind of sloppy and I don't really care. And B, if you do it right, you can pull it back out and use it on the next vehicle. Flashes blue light there. I don't know if you can see that. But blue LED flashes when you get solar, uh, you're getting light to it. It's, you know, it's collecting a charge. Got two connectors. You got this style for a battery. You got a style that goes in the uh, cigarette lighter. I had a classic car. I kept this in the cigarette lighter all the time to keep the battery on trickle, tr trickle charge. And surprisingly, even in the garage, it worked. Which is great because the battery was junk. I mean, at least 10 years old. And she worked. Now the rest of this I'm just tossing. It's not this is not coming out of the trailer at all. This will die with the trailer. And I actually shattered the last one and she still works. So 
So I'm thinking the bolt holes do go straight through. I'm going to mount it something like that. Plug in the wiring. Go straight to the battery. That's probably the easiest install I'm doing today. Bar none. Easy. And there you go. After a little drilling and tapping. Not so much tapping, but drilling. Solar panel is installed. Wind should always be charged up and ready to go now. And while I plan on having an impact with me at all times when I take the trailer out, in case I grab one of the dead battery, old Harbor Freight Breaker Bar will be sitting in here as a plan B. So, should work out pretty well. Easily the best breaker bar on the market right now for the money. For the money, calm down, snap on, guys. So. Yeah, guys, I'll do it for today's episode. Maybe next time I'll install light on this or, you know, go get something cool with it. You know, once I have a better place for the Healy. Because uh, winter will be here before you know it. And I'm saying that in June. Uh, love the Midwest. See you next time, guys. Like, comment, subscribe.